Phosphor.Friends, Earl at the Logbook.com here to introduce you to one of my best friends. You may think I'm joking when I say that, but um, let me introduce you in to a computer game that, no joke, saved my life. This is Ultima 4 Quest of the Avatar by Richard Garriott, a.k.a. Lord British. Um, this is a computer RPG following on from Ultima 3, which I had already played extensively. Um, and I came to this game a couple of years late. I didn't get to play this one until uh, 1987, which was... 1987 sucked. Um, which kind of brings us to the whole thing about the seismic effect that this game had on my life. Uh, you know, in brief, and I've talked about this in podcasts and in other venues, in the spring of 1987, I suddenly found myself effectively without both parents. One died, the other one kind of climbed into the bottle and uh, in a way never came out. So uh, going into my teenage years, I suddenly had no guidance. And in fact, a lot of the time I was in a house by myself going through my high school years alone because my dad uh, formed a relationship with a woman whose job took her out of town and uh, he would he would take off out of town and go. But the bills got paid, but um, he wasn't there. I was uh, suddenly spending my teenage years, my high school years, in a house by myself. So and they would occasionally come home, and that was even worse. But more on that another time. Let's get into the game. Already have the Britannia disc in Drive 2. Of course, if it's me and I'm playing an RPG, I am Pulgo. Days warm, yet there is a cooling breeze, blah blah blah. You are being pulled apart in all directions. Well, that's uh, 2020 for you right there. But the whole point of this introduction is that it pulls you into uh, pulls you into this introduction, which gets you to a place where the game asks you. It's kind of a questionnaire. It's trying to figure out what your moral fiber is. Uh, the Book of History, of course, is referring to uh, one of the, the feelies that came with the game, along with a, a cloth map, which was really cool, and a metal ankh, you know, the Egyptian symbol. So, all right. Thou hath found a Renfair. But the Renfair gets you to the, uh, the questionnaire that I spoke of just a moment ago. So apologies if I'm kind of rocketing through the intro. Uh, you may have to pause it to actually read the captions. Kids, this is what passed for cutscenes back in the day. All right, here we go. Let us begin the casting. <clears throat> Sacrifice and spirituality. Um, I am probably going to go with the latter. Consider this. Consider this. Spare him in compassion. Slay him in the name of justice. Oh yeah, compassion every time. All right. The 
basically what this whole abacus of morality thing is doing is it is determining what class your character is going to be in the game. Alright, this is the last one. And you can see by, you know, whether it places the white or black beads first, that there is, um... There is kind of a predetermined... I'll go. Okay. Who am I? I'm a bard? I'm a bard? Seriously? Oh. Town disc and drive one. Alright. Give me just a moment to... Alright, we're going to enter the town. Now this is a game where you can go and recruit other members to your... You can recruit as many as eight or, or seven other players. Eight total, including yourself. So, cloth armor it is. You have to keep track of your food, you have to keep track of, you know, you've got a budget. Alright, I have got a sling ready for Polgo the Bard. I'm a bard? Really? Okay. Oh, here comes trouble. So, let's talk about how this game could possibly save somebody's life. Like, an impressionable teenager who suddenly has no real moral compass at a very formative time in their lives. On the surface, this looks like a very typical kind of hack and slash. Uh, dungeon crawl, creature kill kind of game. them exit, which means I'm going to wander around aimlessly. Never start a fight, but always finish it. Come back here. No, not really. Part of the way that this game scores your progress is not just in terms of gold, is not in terms of kills, it is in terms of morality. Are you showing compassion by letting your enemies flee when you have bested them? Or are you relentless to the point of just killing them? to make yourself feel better. When you go to the castle, now you notice there was a big castle there where I started. That is the castle of Lord British. 
when you go there, you uh, can consult with Lord British, and he will advise you on your... He and other parties who reside in his castle will advise you on your progress. Oh, secret door. Oh, magic. Sure. Sure, why not? Mm. Yeah, let's uh also get some ginseng. Because ginseng and garlic Are really your uh, oof. kind of expensive? Ginseng and garlic are really the uh, the biggies because sometimes you will have to wander through a swampy area and you will be poisoned by that. Ginseng and garlic are your... No, I don't want magic missile. Okay. Yeah, I'm just standing in the middle of town mixing my ingredients for all to see. Oh, can I get a horse? I don't know if I have enough money left. Yes, you can interest me in horses. Awesome. All right, yeah. Now that may seem like it was a frivolous purchase, but watch this. Watch this. Um, giddy up. Uh, suddenly you're traveling a lot faster. Ooh, seahorses! So, I I now have a horse. And the game's gonna try to, you know, throw a seahorse at me. I think not, my friend. I did not happen upon this game until 1987, by which point it had been out for two years already. And so... Yeah, sometimes you have to slow the horse down. I'm amazed I remember this much about how to play this. town. Trinsic. <clears throat> Let me see if I can find what is your name? What is your job? The conversation engine runs on uh, Keywords. Okay, that's not who I want to talk to. I think this is who I want to talk to. Dupre. Job. Alright, I have my first recruit. And he has all of his hit points. So I guess I'm about to leave the town without a mayor. 
Sorry about that, town. Let me see if... Maces, axes, swords, bows. Can I get a bow? Mm, not at that price. Alright, so Debray is... Sword and chainmail. Well, he ought to be able to acquit himself nicely in a fight. Don't need to worry about getting him ranged weapons just yet. Alright, so... Our party has just grown by one character. Almost looks like we're in South America here. Ultima 2 actually did use uh, a rough map of Earth as its world map. Um, Ultima 3 onward, however, takes place strictly in fictional territory. Now that, over there, which I could reach if I wanted to uh, go through the swamp, that is a shrine. I do not have what I need to enter the shrine yet. Um, because you have to have a mantra, you have to go to the shrine and meditate on that mantra. So let me see if I can head back north and we can uh, wrap up this first video visit to Britannia by uh, consulting with Lord British and consulting with his seer, who I believe is who really gives you, you really provides the meter of your progress in the Eight Virtues. Those being honor, compassion, valor, humility, I think spirituality is in there, um, skeletons, wait, skeletons are not a virtue, but I am going to kill this one anyway. Whoa. So we're going to, uh, we're just going to ride a horse into the king's castle because why not? Actually, um, let me do this. I think we need to leave the horse outside the castle. Stay there, horse. Good horse. All right. We are here to see Lord British, but we are also here to see Yeah, the purple, there is a field of sleeping gas. Oh, Polgo has to be awake, or the seer will not talk to us. Wake up, Polgo. See the S by Polgo's hit points up there? He's asleep. Polgo, wakey, wakey. Polgo really needed a nap, didn't he? There we go. I am a Hawkwind, Seer of Souls, and a fine prog metal band. I see that which is within thee and drives thee to deeds of good or evil. Path dost thou seek enlightenment? Let's see, I have been letting my enemies flee with their lives. Let's see how I'm doing in terms of compassion. My progress on this path is most uncertain. Okay, basically what that means is 
that Paul Gill's going to take another nap. I guess Dupre is just, you know, hauling him through the uh, the hallway there. You know, has him slung over his shoulder or something. Climb with a K. Polgo, thou hast come. We have waited such a long, long time since you first booted the game up. I, he only says this the first time that you visit him. Um. Okay, so I haven't amassed enough XP to level up. You, you, you level up by visiting Lord British. Okay, would someone get these jesters out of my way? You bunch of clowns! When you have amassed enough XP to level up, Lord British will be uh, the person who... Whoa there. Let's go get our horse and adventure onward. I keep forgetting the key buffer and the, the speed of the old Apple II is, uh, it's really easy to get carried away. the horse. What's the command to mount the horse? Let's hole up and camp. Get my hit points back. Alright. So... I'm trying to remember how I mount the horse. That's how long it's been since I've played this. Um, yes, let's talk to the horse. Yeah, what? <laughs> been watching too much Hamilton. Okay, so we have visited Lord British. You kind of have a rough idea of the the lay of the land here, how this game is going to play out, but there is so much more to it, and we will get to that in later segments. Thanks for watching. <laughs> oh, B. B is the key you press to mount the horse. Because that's also the key you press to board a boat.